what's going on today guys what do you think of that little pinch and zoom lifelike video i really enjoyed shooting it and i want to show you guys today how you can do that and fully edit it and shoot it possibly if you'd like on your smartphone i use an android smartphone but you could use an apple or an android phone or you can pair it with an outside camera, shoot the video over to your phone and edit it that way. And that's what I did. I paired it with my DJI Osmo Pocket 2 because it's a very stable camera. And I say that because stabilization is very important in making and selling this little video trick. I shot all of mine with my Pocket 2 because I know it's very stable. Like I said, you can shoot it with your phone, but you wanna make sure your phone has a very stable camera. If it does, go ahead and shoot it with your phone and I'm sure it will turn out great. We're gonna get in to my phone editing app that I love using for stuff like this and that is PowerDirector. And I'll show you the quick edit and what I do to make it so you sell this. But part of selling this trick is how you shoot it. So we're gonna talk about that first. And I'm going to refer to the Pocket 2 because it's my favorite camera to use for stuff like this. I'll put a link above that is my whole playlist on the Pocket 2. If you don't know much about this and you want to learn more about this, check out that link. And if you're going to purchase a Pocket 2, affiliate links below and in those other videos. It helps me out a ton if you're going about purchasing one. But I highly recommend this thing. So, to start off, all of your movements when you're shooting, when you're doing your pinches or your pans, need to be slower than what you want them to be in the end because we're going to speed them up in post. Another thing is say I was clicking on my eye and I'm panning the camera. You want the eye to stay in front of your finger or whatever you're poking, you want to stay in front of the finger. I'm turning my body because I don't have the camera to turn. Pinching is not as important to stay in one spot. Your poles need to seem like you're grabbing that object in your image and moving it. Slow down your movements take as stable of a shot as possible because you're going to overload your phone processor if you're trying to process this on your phone and you're having to add stabilization because to be honest most older android phones and mine's not crazy old i have an lg g8 but the processor's not huge the ram's not huge so it can't handle a lot of that stuff so i have to think about that before shooting something on my specific smartphone some of the newer ones or gaming smartphones have like 12 gig <laughs> RAM and feel free to just load that thing up with with processing power the the Pinches to zoom Walk slowly keep it stable. You're gonna speed that up the movement You're gonna want to grab it grab a spot try to keep your finger on the spot that you're trying to emphasize that you grabbed and in your whole camera movement remember where that spot is and think about keeping your finger there the last thing I want to mention is don't beat yourself up if you don't get it the first time. I shot mine about seven or eight times before I was happy with the whole result. And even then, I wasn't super happy with the whole result. There's still a spot where I was like, well, that sucked, but I'm going to give it a rest because I'm just trying to show you guys how to go ahead and make this. Let's get right into PowerDirector. All right, so first you want to open up your PowerDirector app. If you haven't gotten your PowerDirector app yet, go to your Android store or your apple store if you're doing this on apple and download power director i did the pay for version 35 dollars a year very easy to pay for and it is super cheap for what you get so either go new project if you're going to start new that will bring up your different aspect ratios you can choose for your project and you can go from there um 16 by 9 is how i shot it so i would do it that way but we're going to just go to the project i already did and i'm going to click on it click edit the project and this is what my timeline looks like when I'm done. And I'm just gonna scroll through this so you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to make this timeline look like this and be your final product. But what I'm actually going to do is do it on my other take that I wasn't sure which take I wanted to use. So this was the take that I used for my final one that you're seeing here but the one we're gonna do is going to be for our other take. So the other take I wasn't as happy with, but we can still make the timeline and hopefully it will look just as good. Let's go ahead and go back to home, go to new, go to 16 by nine, 
and then I'm gonna go to Mimo. It automatically opens you up where you're um, gonna pick a video for your timeline. So the 55 second one is the one I did not use that I was okay with. And it's going to always ask you to convert anything that's HD or that's a full HD or ultra HD and it'll just knock it down. We see the video unedited, so I'll go ahead and just kind of play part of it. So you can see, and I didn't do this as slow as you should probably do this to make it really steady, but I felt confident with the Pocket 2 that it was gonna be steady even if I did it somewhat fast. So, and it was, like look how steady that is. There's not a lot of shake there at all. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and stop playing through this because you don't need to see the whole thing. We will go back to the beginning and the first thing you're going to want to do to make this happen is you're going to go through this and every time you're getting ready to do a movement, you're going to do a split. And then at the end of that movement, you're going to split it again. So I'm going to speed through this and I'm going to do all my splits. All right, so now that I've split all those, I zoomed out from my timeline, and you can see how crazy my timeline looks with all of the splits. What I'm gonna go do is go into it. So I'm gonna zoom up a little bit just so that I can pick out the individual split portions, and I'm going to pick the movement, and each movement I'm gonna go into speed. I'm gonna go up just to two times. That's a, a nice, easy one that seems like it works for almost all of them, and it seems like every other shot is a movement. So from here, that one's a movement. So basically go through all of them and bump your speed to a comfortable speed that feels right for you. But I went through on my last one and literally moved all of them to two times, which seemed to be like pretty much perfect. So all of those are there. I'm also going to do one other thing, and that is click on anything in that first part of the timeline, then you go to audio mix, and go ahead and crank that first timeline piece down to zero. And it's because you just don't want any audio from that. Um, then for the music, if you wanna pick music for it, we go up to second one down on the top left, and music is the option at the bottom. Now if you're doing the paid for version, you click on the music up there, you got Shutterstock stuff that you can use, which is all this stuff, or more music. A lot has changed since I started paying for my version of PowerDirector, but before it was just these options under more music. You could watch an ad to use them the one time, and you can do that, and then it will allow you to use them the one time. Again, paid for a version $35 for a year is well worth it for this app and all it can do. If you didn't watch any of my other videos on this app, please do because it's well worth the money. I picked comedy and I picked it under the Shutterstock, I believe for my last one. Nope, I think I picked comedy under here. So I picked comedy and then my last one, I think I did, let's see, is it It's Funny? No, that one's a little intense. Um, see what this one is. Oh, that could be fun, Mystery Shopper. That's not what I did, but let's do it for this one. So you click that, it goes down here, and then I go to the end, and I go ahead and I make sure I go ahead and trim that at the end-ish. So we'll trim it here for now, and then we'll just delete this last little bit here. So delete that, and let's see how how's it look. All right. That's okay, not necessarily the song I would have really chosen, the last song that I did for the main video, I really liked. So, the fade in, fade out, let's add that in here. So to do the fade in, what I like to do first so that I don't miss out on any of my beginning of it, with this one you could actually probably just do a fade in right here and this part would just be fading in as the hand comes into screen. Um, so I could just leave this. If you wanted to do it like my last one, you would add something to the beginning of your main timeline like a black and then fade in over that but I'm not going to do that because this has plenty of space at the beginning where I'm comfortable fading in so I'm going to go to photo let me back up I'm going to click my layers tab third down on the left hand side go to photo 
go to color board, black, add that, and I'm going to shorten that up. And before I do this fade in, I'm going to copy this color board and I'm gonna move it to the end. So I do need one at the end for my fade out. And we'll go ahead there and I'll put it to where the music ends out there. And that's probably good for that. That's fine. And um, we'll resize it. And Power Director did an update where it's making a resize on the, the top corner and I don't really like that. They should fix that. That is a recent update that I'm not a huge fan of. And you can scoot it to the size of your screen. Just make it bigger than the screen and then scoot it to the size of the screen. I hope they didn't make that resize for every clip in this because it is really hard to drag past here. See how it's jumping around because my finger's to the edge of my phone. So I'm just gonna rotate it around so that's at the bottom. Man, Power Director, if you are seeing this video, please fix that. That was a really dumb update. I do not like that up there. It should be in the bottom left corner. Um, all right, so it's fully covering it, going to opacity. You're gonna make a keyframe when you want it in. Make a keyframe at the beginning while it's 100%. Then make a keyframe when you want it to be zero. But you don't have to hit keyframe now, you can just slide it down to zero. And I do have a full video on fade in and fade out, which just kind of shows this. So I could have made it longer, and I could do my uh, zero keyframe at the end. And I'll just duplicate that keyframe, then I'll erase the first one, and it'll make it a slower fade in. Okay, that's perfect. And let's go to the end real quick and do my fade out, and then we'll call it good. And so for this one, I will keyframe here where I want it fully black at the at the end of the clip. We will keyframe it fully black. And then at the beginning of the clip, I will keyframe it at fully zero. And that will give me my fade out. Another thing I want to do, because I like to do this with my music, is do a fade out. So you click on your volume with the music, and then the fade out will make it so that it fades out at the very end. So let's go ahead and we can also make it fade in at the beginning. So let's do that. Fade in and fade out is always good with the music. And then to finalize your video, you're just going to hit this button in the top right, go to save to gallery. That's what I like to do, and then I share on my own time, but you can just share it right out of here. Go ahead and produce a 4K version of it, and you're done. Do you feel confident in editing this in PowerDirector and shooting this on either your phone or Pocket 2, whether you have one or you're going to get one? Do you feel confident with it? If you don't feel confident on Pocket 2, check out that playlist, like I said. You'll feel confident on it, I promise. But... Leave a comment. Let me know if this video helped you feel confident in making your own real life zoom and scroll effect video. They're great for posting on social media. So if it did, please leave a comment below. I hope this helped you guys out. And if you enjoyed this video and got use out of it, you know to like this video and subscribe to my channel because I'm putting out videos weekly and they're all budgetary videos on helping you become a better videographer and just have fun with it. I'm going to do a video next week, surprise, surprise, on the Pocket 2, but it's not a positive one. I'm going to do a video, because I'm trying to get DJI to do some stuff, on the problems with the Pocket 2 and what, what I'd like changed. Um, mind you, don't let this discourage you in getting one, because all of these problems I'm going to talk about could be fixed with firmware updates. And I know they can fix them, and they probably will if people keep complaining a little bit about it. They also came out with a white version of the Pocket 2. It's kind of cool looking. So check them out. And I will, of course, have links for those in the description. So check out the affiliate links. And you know, it always helps me out if you buy stuff from those. But I'm happy if you're just getting products and making cool stuff and telling me about it. So feel free to leave comments. Make something awesome. This is going to be my last week's video. Below is going to always be what YouTube recommends to you. And until next time, get out there and shoot something awesome and share it because it's always fun to shoot and share. And peace out guys, I'll see you next week.